Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. James Gunn just made some official announcements about Superman Legacy, so we'll break it all down. We already know who most of the characters are going to be. He clarified some of the storylines, too, and there have been a few surprise characters that I did not expect that were going to be in the movie. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's a bunch more that he'll be revealing in the next couple of months as they start to film the movie, so whatever they wind up revealing, of course I will do videos about it. It's meant to be like the true beginning of his DCU, even though he's revealed that Creature Commandos is technically going to be the actual beginning of the DCU, even though some of the characters from the DCEU, like Blue Beetle, will come back in the DCU. We still don't quite know when Creature Commandos is happening, but I'll talk about that later in the video. Probably the biggest news you probably saw on your feeds this morning is that he confirmed officially that Nicholas Holt will play the new DCU Lex Luthor. The funny thing about this is that he actually auditioned for the Matt Reeves Batman that Robert Pattinson wound up getting and failed. Like he talked about failing the Batman audition. So it really fulfills that Dark Knight line. You live long enough, you see yourself become the villain. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Doesn't it sound like Lex Luthor is the person who sees himself as the hero of the story but winds up being twisted, dark, and becoming one of the biggest villains? It sounds like that'll kind of be his character progression over the future of the DCU movies where he'll start out being like this normal tech billionaire that will slowly be twisted, evil, eventually becoming one of the biggest villains. But part of the idea is that in Superman Legacy, he's not meant to be the main villain. He'll just be one of the antagonists in the background. Probably not even that big of an antagonist to Superman. But they will use him in other future non-Superman crossover movies. Superman sequels, of course, in success, assuming they do a trilogy of new Superman movies. And eventually, the new versions of whatever their Justice League movies wind up turning into. Even though James Gunn hasn't announced when that next Justice League movie is actually going to happen. So the idea is they're not just casting Nicholas Holt for Superman Legacy or the Superman movies. Lex Luthor is probably going to be one of the biggest upcoming characters in the Superman mythos across all the upcoming DCU movies. James Gunn's official statement just reads, Yes, I can finally answer Nicholas Holt is Lex Luthor in Superman Legacy, and I couldn't be happier. We went out to dinner last night to celebrate and discuss how we can create a Lex that will be different from anything you've seen before and will never forget. Then he goes on to say, but James, we heard this weeks ago. Why didn't you tell us that was true at the time? Because although we were discussing it, it wasn't final until a couple of days ago. And I don't want to tell you something that isn't certain. I did a video a couple weeks ago. It seems like it was actually just a little while ago after his casting was announced by all the trades pretty much everywhere on social media. Like you probably remember a while ago. I just fell in love with him as a character. He's very uh, manipulative, smart and cruel but also makes sense and is yeah jockeying for position as you say in within this court and using all the pieces and people he can to to get the results he wants. James Gunn is just saying that he waited a little bit longer because apparently at the time the contract had not been absolutely finalized in stone like the ink wasn't quite dry yet. But if you look at the timestamp on Nicholas Holt's social media post here, it's from last week. He essentially confirmed the news himself in so many words. And it sounds like last week is when the contract was officially finalized. And even though I'm only capturing part of the replies here, I love that everyone is replying using Smallville references, like particularly Michael Rosenbaum's version of Lex Luthor. As James Gunn said, they're planning on Nicholas Holt's version being totally different from all the other versions we've seen before. He's also talking about movie versions in addition to TV versions like Michael Rosenbaum's Lex. Part of the idea, I think, is that unlike Henry Cavill, Superman, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor relationship in Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, the Justice League movie, or previous movie versions of Lex Luthor, for example, Superman Legacy is supposed to take place so early in Superman's career, most of the world doesn't really know about him yet. They'll also probably take advantage of that and say that Lex Luthor also probably learns about him for the first time during the movie. And unlike the Jesse Eisenberg Lex Luthor, he doesn't start out hating Superman's guts from the start. So the progression of the Superman Lex Luthor relationship will be very different than what we saw in say like the Batman v Superman movie. And it'll be a little bit more like the Michael Rosenbaum, Lex Luthor, in Smallville Superman relationship with Tom Welling's version of the character. Where over the course of multiple movies, like it'll take a little while, Lex Luthor will slowly grow to mistrust and eventually hate Superman. Then much later on, he'll try to start working against him, tearing down his name and trying to kill him. That's kind of the way they did things on Smallville, and it does seem like James Gunn is cooking a lot of Smallville energy into Superman legacy from the start. 
part of the idea on Smallville is that they did actually genuinely start as friends, but they started keeping secrets from each other, primarily Superman keeping his secret from Lex Luthor, and eventually it causing him to mistrust him and then slowly hate him. But that took many, many years for that to wind up happening. But I think part of the idea is that they do want Nicholas Holt's version of Lex Luthor to feel different from Michael Rosenbaum's Lex, even though they seem like they're borrowing some of the energy of that character. So the idea is that this new version of Lex Luthor will not have grown up in Smallville alongside Superman being his best friend when they were kids. He'll probably be learning about him for the first time in Metropolis after Superman reveals himself to the world as Superman with the Superman identity. If you don't remember, back in the day, a lot of Michael Rosenbaum's Lex backstory was invented purely for the Smallville TV show, with them changing the comic book backstory so that they could use Lex as a major character in Superman's early life and his development becoming Superman eventually, instead of having to wait until Superman got to Metropolis. Pretty much most of the show was him growing up in Smallville, only taking things to Metropolis full time in the final seasons. And if you don't remember, the ironic thing about that, like kind of a funny thing, is that by the time Superman or Clark Kent made it to Metropolis full time and the Daily Planet on the show started working there, Michael Rosenbaum had actually left the show as a full time character. They introduced the concept of the Daily Planet around the middle of the show, but Clark didn't really start working there full time in Metropolis until season eight. And Michael Rosenbaum left the show full time as a character in season seven. He only came back a couple times for cameos after that, which he's talked about at length. James Gunn even admitted to him face to face that he is one of the best versions of Lex Luthor that he's ever seen so far. And you are the best Lex. Let's admit it. We know you're the best Lex. Come on, you're being funny. I'm not being funny. You're definitely the best Lex. Really? Definitely. He's not lying. Michael Rosenbaum's Lex Luthor is one of the best versions of Lex, but that's because they had so many years to develop the character. So we'll see if they can actually top that with Nicholas Holt's portrayal of the character. He's an amazing actor, so I definitely think he has it in him. Most people will remember him from the X-Men movies, but it does sound like because they're recasting all the X-Men and they're bringing back the classic versions of the X-Men and Deadpool 3 and Secret Wars, they don't have big plans for his version of Beast. Like we literally just saw the Kelsey Grammer version of Beast in the Marvel's movie post credit scene. So even though Nicholas Holt had a good experience working on the X-Men movies, it just sounds like they didn't have big plans for his character. So it's like, okay, I'm free to go off to the DC universe now. They just cast Sarah Sampaio playing his Miss Test Mocker, but outside of that, we haven't heard about any more castings from LexCorp like Mercy Graves or anyone like that. I know a lot of people have asked about that character. Maybe she'll show up eventually. I've talked about this before, but even though I loved Henry Cavill's version of Superman, I was not a huge fan of the Jesse Eisenberg version of Lex Luthor. His version was a little bit more like the Mark Zuckerberg Facebook version of Lex Luthor. But to be fair, that is pretty true to real life. Like a lot of the younger tech billionaires out there in the world are coming from the world of tech and social media platforms. Just hoping that in this new DCU, James Gunn does not include any random jars of piss or anything like that. There was a LexCorp Easter egg during the Blue Beetle movie in the Palmera City skyline in his hometown. He's one of the first characters we know are coming back in the new DCU movies, but that's about as close as we've gotten to LexCorp Easter eggs in the new DCU. Probably the other biggest news recently is reported that the new version of Supergirl will also be in Superman Legacy in some way. Before the news, I assumed that they'd only reference her lightly at most and like she wouldn't be seen on screen just because there are so many characters that are already confirmed to be in that movie. Seriously, this is the list and this is just some of the major characters. There's still a couple others that James Gunn has not announced yet. But he did announce that they're doing the Supergirl solo movie based on the Woman of Tomorrow comic book story. One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're gonna turn that into a big science fiction epic film. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents, whereas Supergirl in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. If she's going to be in Superman Legacy, even like a small cameo scene, my assumption is that it's to help set up that solo movie and just establish that she does exist in the universe and what her relationship with Kal-El is. But none of the reports actually say what she's going to be doing in the movie, so I don't think it's going to be a super huge role. One of the only things that we know is that it will not be Sasha Kaye's Supergirl from the Flash movie, which does seem kind of like a downer because she did a pretty decent job during that movie. I think a lot of people were hoping that she would return as the new version of Supergirl. 
My assumption is that James Gunn is just trying to recast as many of the big Justice League level roles as possible, Supergirl being one of them, also because they're planning on doing this new Supergirl solo movie, so he wants the director or like whoever's working on this Supergirl solo movie to actually be involved in the casting of the new version of Supergirl. There was like a completely different ending to the Flash movie meant to set up her version of Supergirl becoming part of Henry Cavill Superman's mythos in whatever the next Man of Steel 2 movie was going to turn into. I did a much longer video about what that scene was, what they actually cut from the movie, so I'll link it below in the description because there's a lot of stuff that they cut from the movie because they made it before James Gunn was hired to reboot the DCEU. Then they hired him and they basically had to go in and change the endings of a bunch of these current movies that are happening this year. A lot of it was meant to set up a Crisis on Infinite Earths Justice League movie, which they're actually doing next year, but it's animated for the Tomorrowverse. There's like a three-part Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths movie. I've already done a trailer video for that, so link for that in the description below too. The other big DC show that's happening next year is the Penguin Batman HBO series. I've already done a trailer video for that too. I'll link it at the end of this, but it'll be completely separate to like the Robert Pattinson Batman universe Elseworlds, not connected to the DCU stuff. Let me know in the comments though, who do you want to play this new version of Supergirl inside the DCU? And if you have any big requests for DC videos before the end of the year, there's a lot of big stuff coming up. So make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of that stuff. Click here for that full Batman Penguin HBO series trailer and click here for that brand new Deadpool 3 teaser in Wolverine. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.